take you on a journey to discover and clarify a shared life theme, a South African story of mutual support, information obtained with a three-day mission to get the African out of the grave. My name is Ben Minar and with me is Antoni Meyer. We are the Chairman and Vice Chairman of PASA or the Parrot Breeders Association of Southern Africa. Uh, our organization consists of more than a thousand members and we've got about 30 bird clubs that are associated with us. Uh, we've got a, co a code of conduct and code of good practice that all our members must adhere to. Uh, we are here today to tell you something about a parrot that's very well known and not only kept in South Africa, but all over the world as a pet bird. When people think about the parrot, they think about an African Grey. African Greys are the most popular pet birds and millions of people have enjoyed the company of this wonderful and intelligent bird. The natural habitat is Central and West Africa where they live in large flocks. There are about 20 range states where they are indigenous. During the heydays of trapping in the 1990s, the trappers perfected the art of catching the birds. They placed traps in clearings and also placed caller birds around. This historical footage is now used to support the present supposed threat to the species. The Gabon proposal is also unclear as to the exact number of birds left in the wild and estimates are made of numbers between 800,000 and 12 million. We are concerned that the uplisting to CITES Appendix 1 will not give African Grace the protection that it is intended to give. Although the uplisting will stop the international trade, it is common knowledge that the trappers that trap African Grey parrots to support their livelihoods simply eat the birds when they are not able to sell them to the exporters. The feathers are also popular for medicinal purposes. Deforestation also had a negative impact on the breeding of the birds. Unfortunately, their numbers have declined, more so during the 80s and early 90s when huge numbers of these birds were exported. CITES have limited the quota that countries are allowed to export, and since the end of 2015, no new quotas were approved for any country as a result of irregularities related to export permits. We have made use of the approved export quotas of CITES to obtain breeding stock and greys are now frequently bred for a number of generations. We have over the last 20 years managed to improve the breeding of the species and we are now the most successful breeders of African greys. The Parrot Breeders Association have researched the position of African grey breeders in South Africa and it is clear that the species is well established and successfully bred locally. In fact, we have been so successful 
that lately around 80% of all international trade in African greys are from South African captive bred origin. If one compared the present supply of tame Avery bred birds with their position in 2001, it is clear that the threat to the wild population was much greater in 2001 than it is now. We accompanied officials of the Department of Environmental Affairs on an inspection of various African grey breeding facilities around the country. The birds breed the best in shady private areas and do not need large aviaries to breed. After one or two clutches, they are transferred to large free-flying aviaries, where they can socialize and rest for 8 to 12 weeks. We strive to allow the natural breeding cycle of the birds to continue as far as possible. Our supply of well-socialized tame companion birds to the rest of the world in fact reduces the demand on wild-caught birds. Tame birds are also preferred as pets and wild-caught birds are not in demand for pets when tame, captive bred birds are available. In captivity, the birds are protected from their natural enemies and the optimum diet, dedicated care and management that they receive enables them to breed for up to 40 years in captivity. This is much longer than they would normally breed in nature. Their lifespan is also longer in captivity than in the wild. The threat to the wild population is thus not ongoing. African grey parrots are very good parents and they are allowed to incubate and raise the young to about 3 to 5 weeks old. A percentage of the birds are allowed to be fully raised by their parents and are kept for future breeding stock. The babies are then taken from the nest and are hand reared until weaned. In the wild, breeding pairs raise an average of 1.1 babies per year. But in South Africa, we have increased that figure to 1.4 babies per year. The combination of South Africa's favourable climate and the dedication and experience of our agriculturists contributed to our success in captive breeding of African greys. Our survey in South Africa indicated that about 20,000 workers and their families are directly dependent on the African grey captive breeding industry for jobs and they will lose their livelihoods if the market declines drastically. Some of these workers are even postgraduate students that are unable to find jobs in their field of qualification. Working at African grey breeding facilities to put food on the table. My name is Matete Lucelle. I went to the University of Limpopo. I did a bachelor's degree in information science for four years. Yeah, well, but due to the economy, that's why. What does this job mean to you and your family? Um, for me, I can say it's a lot in the sense that it helps me take care of my family. You know, right now I'm actually kind of the one taking care of them. So I was grateful to actually get this job right after school so that I can actually take care of my family. If no further commercial exports are allowed and this facility has to close down, what will your reaction be? They can't do that. Seriously, they can't do that because if we have eight people working here who are actually taking care of their families. Okay, I, I have a brother here. We are kind of that cousins or something like that. He has a wife. And they have four kids. He is the only one that's working at home. He takes care of those kids by himself. With what money? The money that he gets from here. And I have a sister who's also a, he's a, I mean she's a relative of mine, third fourth cousin or something like that. And she has her own family. She has two kids. Her husband doesn't work in the meantime. She's the one taking care of the family. I have a son, a new boy. And I'm actually taking care also for, with, I mean, I'm, I'm also taking care of my family, taking care of all of them. I'm doing that. So if they step, if they stop all of this, then just imagine how many families that would be just homeless, starving. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot, very large. 
We are concerned that the uplisting of African greys to Cycus 1 will have a detrimental effect on the wild birds as it will limit the legal trade in captive bred birds. This will create a shortage of birds and increase the illegal trade. Illegal trade in wild birds with a high mortality rate and lack of hygiene and quarantine must be avoided at all costs. That brings up the next question. What other natural resource will replace the African grey parrot to sustain the livelihood of the trappers? We hope that the parties to the COP17 meeting will realise the negative consequence of the uplisting and vote for the parrots to stay on CITES Appendix 2. We have demonstrated that the threat to the wild population is not ongoing and therefore African greys do not qualify to be uplisted to CITES 1. We will cooperate with any organisation that has the same aim as us to protect the African greys in the wild and to look after them. From Pretoria, South Africa, goodbye and keep well and look after your African grey.